All right. I just uh, saw the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. And um, I found it interesting. The They start off with uh, Harry and um, Peter Parker connection being strong. Though, I don't know how exactly they are good friends. Because in the film, he's in love with MJ, right? And the first chance Harry gets, he takes MJ. Uh, he dates MJ. Um, eventually, MJ likes Peter Parker. At the very end of the film. But Parker kind of separates himself from her. Um... One thing that I thought was really strong in this movie, other than the Uncle Ben death scene that occurred in this film, was uh, the Green Goblin's character arc. Um, him going from Norman Oswald, a scientist, to a madman in a green suit. And um, William Defoe played that great. Um, I really like this movie. I see why it's a classic. I give it like a 8 out of 10. Very good. Very good film. Alright, um, at the end scene of the first movie, well, the last few minutes, there was, um, the, the battle with uh, Green Goblin and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And, um, the Green Goblin pulls out, like, a trick to try to convince Peter that, hey, it's Norman, you know, don't hurt me, you know me, you're, we're friends, we know each other, that kind of thing. And then he tries to kill Spider-Man with his, um, riding board. It goes in the air and stuff and can shoot stuff at people or have spikes and stuff. Well, this time it had spikes and it's coming up. Um, and Peter Parker has a spidey sense. So he jumps up and um, that's what kills the Green Goblin because the Green Goblin impaled himself pretty much. Um, one element that I see that's going to probably play into uh, the second movie and the third movie is... Um, when Spider-Man brings home uh, Norman, he takes Norman back to um, uh, his home. Norman's gone at this point. Um, and Harry sees him, his friend Harry. And um, you, you see Spider-Man, not uh, Peter Parker. But yeah, it's going to play into part two and part three, definitely. Um, I really did enjoy the first film. I really did. It was, it was fun to watch. You know, it had a lot of good points. I feel like the first one didn't rush anything. It would just hit the points as it went along. It had a good story to tell. That's what makes a good classic movie. One here. So, uh, Spider-Man 2. After... Uh, seeing it, I have a few things to say, and I want to summarize it too. Uh, let's start with the summarizing. Um, Peter Parker has to decide whether he, w he wants to be Spider-Man or not be Spider-Man in this film. And uh, he's juggling so many different things. Uh, he has to uh, be a pizza delivery boy. He works at uh, photography. Um, he also has to go to college and and do work from there and stuff like that. Um, so he's really at the decision point on what he wants to do. Um, with that decision, he eventually decides to be Spider-Man by the end of the film. But by then, like, there's a lot of kind of issues I see with like with him in general 
just the way he's done things. Like he's stretched himself too thin at Spider-Man. He pretty much disappoints everybody around him initially. Including Mary Jane. Who, in my opinion, is someone who I think could do well without Peter. Just to be honest with you. She goes through several boyfriends. Like, she's about to get married and stuff in this film. She's going to get married. And, um... Basically, in this film, it's um, also a reveal. So basically, like, Peter Parker reveals he's Spider-Man to pretty much everybody who needs to know. Except for, I don't think Aunt May knows. But it's, um... I mean, Mary Jane. Uh, the villain, Doc Ock, who I'll get into in a minute. And also, um... MJ herself. Now, I'll tell you about the effects of this, but um, first I'll start out with Doc Ock. He's the main villain, um, and his name is Dr. Octavius, and uh, he is trying to create a device that's self self-sustaining device, um, and it goes awry real quickly. He lose, loses his love interest, well, his wife, and... Um, Loses his wife, and, uh, he loses his mind. And by the end of the movie, with Peter Parker revealing that he's Spider-Man to him, he, uh, is able to rethink things. And, um, that helps, basically, um, help him change his mind in helping Peter. Um... And then Mary Jane, who's had a grudge uh, for him the whole film, because everything that kind of Peter's done at this point, even though it's to help MJ on some level, it's also kind of put a separation between them and pretty much everybody around him. The things he does, where he'll run off, and, and then, like, they don't know that he's Spider-Man, so when Spider-Man appears, they're just like, okay, a different person. Um... So, it, it causes a resolution where she decides to be with Peter at the very end of the film. So, now he gets to have his MJ that he's been chasing for the first well, film and then this film. So, he, he can have her now. And so, they're together by the end of this film. Um, now, Harry, he has a grudge from the first film where um, his father, played by William Defoe, gets killed off. But he was also a madman and stuff like that. Uh, what this film hints at is um, basically uh, this film hints at basically him becoming a, a villain just like his father. And there's a nice William Defoe cameo where he just is like, "Avenge me, son," kind of deal. I, I I like that. I like this. I like this movie. It's it's as solid as the first. I give it an eight out of ten. I really enjoyed where they went with it. All right, I just got done seeing Spider-Man three, and I'd like to just briefly go over it. Um, basically, it uh, is about Peter Parker as Spider-Man is getting more attention than uh, MJ, and MJ's jealous of that. Um, because her career is kind of not doing great. In the first movie, she was working towards something. In the second movie, she got to act. In the third movie, uh, which she got to act in, didn't go too well. Um, I really enjoyed uh, this movie. Uh, my favorite part was... Uh, well, well, was the fight scene between Harry and Peter Park uh, uh, and Spider-Man? Those two in the opening, and then like when Harry gets amnesia after the first fight, and he goes back to being Harry for a while. I found that enjoyable. Um, he's having more fun, Harry, with the amnesia. So, the film was enjoyable. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed like the resolution between. Peter Parker and Harry getting along at the end, and unfortunately, um, Harry's character dies. But um, there's kind of a, a good wrap-up feeling. 
Um, MJ and Peter, do they really get together? I don't know. Should they get together, though? I don't know either. Um, I give this movie a 6 out of 10. This whole trilogy is a solid trilogy. Classic trilogy. So...